Have you been considering starting your own podcast? If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. Well, first, it's completely free. Hello, great price point. Nothing, which is great. There are tons of creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer, making podcasting portable and super easy. Anchor will also distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, you know, all the major places podcasts can be found, getting your show out there and heard. You can also make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Anchor pairs you with sponsors instantly and gives your show a support button for your loyal listeners to show their appreciation. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. I trust Anchor with both of my podcasts, Mommy Wines and Tales After Dark. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And don't forget to join the MW Podcast Network. Hi, Wine Moms, and thank you for listening to this MW Network and Emma Don production. Now available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and wherever else you get your favorite podcasts. Do you love supporting the show? Shop all the MWP branded merchandise on themommywines.com or click the support link in the show notes below. This week's show is brought to you by our sponsors, Anchor, my podcast platform, and in my entirely biased opinion, the best way to record, edit, and upload your podcast all in one place. One Hope. One Hope wines are thoughtfully created by the most acclaimed winemakers rooted with purpose right in the heart of Napa Valley, California. One Hope puts your wine to work by donating over $5 million and counting to causes around the world. Shop One Hope wines today and feel good with each sip at onehopewine.com backslash my shop backslash mommy wines. Zaya Active. Do you need premium, quality, active, and loungewear? I know I do, but I hate the price tag on top designer and retail brands. Shop myzaya.com backslash emadon for men's, women's, and youth styles today. New Zaya Active items are released every Wednesday, along with new episodes of Mummy Wines. So make sure you're following along on IG for new items showcased every week in my stories. The Fetching Barker. The Fetching Barker is mine and Milo's online, eco-friendly, naturally focused dog supply shop with everything you need from fetching accessories to daily doggy essentials. Shop thefetchingbarker.com and use code ZEPLIN15 to save at checkout. EDJ Consulting Group. If you didn't know, podcasting is not my full-time gig just yet. By day, I am a business financial consultant specializing in small to medium-sized business bookkeeping, tax prep, and payroll. This is what has allowed me to not have to choose between my son or a job. If you're interested in learning how you can become a home bookkeeper, check out my Home Bookkeeper Masterclass. You can find more info at edjconsultinggroup.com. Now let's get into the episode. Hey. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. So glad you were so understanding about rescheduling. Oh my gosh. Seriously, of course. I know (laughs) how it is with kids and whatnot. That's one of the things I love about having my podcast is most of the people who are guests on the show, they're either moms or they're working women. And I feel like if I had any other demographic, it would not be as flexible and understanding. But because, you know, like the show is geared towards those kind of listeners and those kind of guests, anytime anything happens, they're like, oh, yeah, of course, like, do your thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Like, we're all doing so much all the time. I feel like 90 9.9% of the time I feel like I'm just running around like 
a chicken with my head cut off. So when somebody <laughs> is like, oh, I have to reschedule, I'm like, oh, yes, girl. Like, that is, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> so back when we originally had our recording scheduled, um, you were actually not in Vegas. You were heading to Utah. Yeah. Um, good things Utah asked me to be on their show to show some like fun crafts. And so that was my TV debut, one might say. <laughs> but it was so fun. So fun. Yeah. Were you nervous? Because I would literally crap my pants if somebody asked me to be on TV. You know what? I I wasn't. I was nervous. Um just like because they asked for like all my um, like pictures and content before. So I was like just nervous about that part, getting it all done. But when I got on there, I wasn't nervous because it was so it doesn't feel like it's not like you're in front of like a live audience. You know what I mean? It's like a quiet room. And so I just kind of oh, forgot nice. that I was even on TV. <laughs> this week's podcast is supported by Free Lunch Coffee. I'm always looking for an easy way to make a difference in the world, and it really can't get any easier than this. When you buy just one bag of free lunch coffee, you are providing 10 meals to children in need. And free lunch coffee donates 50% of profits to end hunger in the lives of young children. There are children out there who really need our support. And it can be extremely difficult and intimidating trying to figure out where to start and how to help. Free Lunch Coffee also has some great custom design mugs and tumblers. Each mug provides 10 meals and a tumbler provides 20 meals to children in need. This could be a great Christmas gift and Christmas is all about the spirit of giving You are not just buying gifts for your loved ones, you are also feeding hungry children. Beyond a fantastic cause, Free Lunch Coffee has great tasting coffee that is specialty grade, certified organic, and fair trade. They offer a 100% money back guarantee for 30 days. If you don't love it, they will give you a full refund and you can keep the coffee. So you have nothing to lose. Free Lunch Coffee is offering a 10% discount to you. Use coupon code WINES at checkout when you visit freelunchcoffee.com. Like some of like the daytime talk shows are a lot different than some of like the news kind of things. But even then, um, like even the ones that have live audiences, I don't even know if they would do that right now. Oh due yeah, to the probably virus. not. They'd have like cardboard cutouts. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so, they would just take their photo. And yeah, I was out. actually surprised that they still were having guests on the show now, but I'm glad that they did because it was a really fun experience. Oh, that is so exciting. So like everybody else that I find to con into being my guests on the show, I cyber stalk them on Instagram. And I gush over people's Instagrams all the time. I'm like, how do you have the time? How do you come up with these ideas to have like the most perfectly curated Instagram? But yours is like a step above. It is like... (laughs) Going into a princess fairy oh. wonderland, it's like the cutest thing oh I've gosh. ever seen. And you're a girl mom, so it fits so yeah, perfect. Yeah, you know, it's funny that you say that today because I was just like freaking out <laughs> like five minutes ago, not five minutes ago, but like an hour ago, I was um, trying to get a picture and I thought, you know, I'm never on my feed at all just because it's a lot of work, you know, like on top of everything else, I have to get ready. Like, <laughs> and so I yeah. thought, you know, today I'm going to get ready and take pictures with my girls and try to like be in the picture. Cause I don't, on Thanksgiving, I noticed everyone was posting like their pictures with their family and I don't have any pictures like with my family. So <laughs> I thought, you know, I'm just that's how yeah, I am. It's so hard. And so I'm like, I'm just going to get in the picture. And so I did. And I, I think I'm going to post it because it's so like real life. Like <laughs> my little one is 16 months and 
were still nursing um, against my will. And she, <laughs> and I'm like trying to take a picture and she's just lifting up my shirt. And I'm like, yeah, this, this is <laughs> what it's really like because, and there's not time to do it all. There's just not. <laughs> Besides yours being like a fairy princess wonderland, our feats are kind of similar because it is so much easier just to take a cute picture of your kid and not have to worry about like you yes. being in it or setting up a camera or like trying to take a selfie at a good angle. It's just so much easier to take cute pictures. Oh my gosh, yes. Or like I do a lot of like DIYs and crafts and it's like I can fully control that. But like I cannot fully control my kids or the way that you know like all the other things it's just it's a lot I don't know how um people that are in their pictures all the time do it because I don't know maybe it's my season of life I'm in with little kids or what but it's a lot (laughs) it's so much and especially like being moms like my makeup is not done all the time not saying that you have to have makeup on to take a picture and put it on Instagram but like my hair is a mess most of the time. I don't have makeup on. Like, and then trying to wrangle a toddler into taking a picture with me. Impossible. It's like either he's going to be looking crazy. I'm going to be looking crazy. It's never going to be like, there might be one out of 200 that are like, okay, that's cute. Oh my gosh, seriously. <laughs> that's why I'm like this picture that I got today is so funny. I really think I might post it because it's just like, this is real life, you know? <laughs> <laughs> do it I, I know dare you. and it's like also like what you said about like not putting makeup on for Instagram like yeah that's true and I don't get me wrong I'm all about that but also like there's something to be said about like feeling good about yourself right and like not saying you have to have that to feel good about yourself but if that is what makes you feel good then you know like I'm really probably not going to post a picture on Instagram without makeup on like it's just the reality of it oh yeah but, before COVID hit, I would get up and get ready every single day. And now, yes, like my whole life I've been like that. And now I'm like lucky if I get ready like twice a month. (laughs) The holidays are fast approaching and you know what that means? That's right, it's gifting season. Luckily, Zaya Active has everything you're looking for when it comes to premium, affordable, active and loungewear for the whole family. Head over to myzaya.com backslash Emma Dawn to start checking off your Christmas list from the comforts of home. With the extremely popular women's leggings to the stunning men's collection and ever-growing youth styles, you're bound to find something for everyone. Once again, that's myzaya.com backslash Emma Dawn. See, I, I am like living my best life in COVID. I already was, like, such an introvert that, like, everybody staying home and not, like, clogging up the stores or having traffic on the road, I am living (laughs) for it. And then, like, I did the corporate life thing for a while uh, because I was told I was never going to have kids. So when I didn't have that focus of, like, oh, I want to find somebody and and start a family – I kind of switched gears into just focusing on my career for a really long time and focusing on myself. So I would get up and I would put makeup on and I would get dressed up and I would wear heels every day and go to work. And like after having Milo, I'm like, that is like the least (laughs) thing I want to do. Like I want to sit at home and I want to snuggle my baby and like most of the time since he's been born and he's four so COVID has not been going on for four years it it does feel like it but like I just like it's just always been me and him and I never had anybody to like get dressed up for I you know I don't go on dates it's just like most of the time I would not post a picture of myself um because the only person that's looking at me is a four-year-old but it does like it definitely does change things like when you feel you know good you're like ooh that's a cute picture like i feel good about myself i'm going to post it but when you know you open your camera and it's switched around to 
looking up your nose and at your double chin you're like oh yeah that, that's rough that is rough. i'm the opposite i've always been like an extreme extrovert I say hi. Oh. yeah really my daughter's here she's like i want to say hi okay say hi hi okay <laughs> oh hi um <laughs> let's talk about real life oh okay <laughs> i'm like you want to watch youtube go watch youtube <laughs> Let me record this there you podcast. Go. <laughs> but my, hus- <laughs> my husband um, travels for work, so I am like alone most of the time with the girls. So you know, you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. <laughs> I noticed that. Is that what took you guys to Vegas? Is him? He's a pilot, right? Yeah. Um. He yeah. He works for Southwest. He um. It didn't like directly bring us here we um are both colorado um natives but we were trying to buy a house there and like the market was just so crazy that we were just over it like it was exhausting you know and i had some family out here and um, interruption totally threw me off but we had an offer on a house it got accepted and then it fell through and we were like you know what let's just get out we have the ability to move anywhere which within three weeks we were in Vegas so (laughs) it was kind of crazy to move from somewhere we've lived our whole lives to a different state where we really didn't know anyone but it was a really good decision we're happy here so it's not that bad I've done it like four or five I feel like I I feel like I'm such like a (laughs) gypsy like soul like I would move anywhere (laughs) I really would my husband could be like let's move to uh, I don't know Iceland and I'd be like let's do it (laughs) so I I know we won't live forever just for that reason because I just get antsy (laughs) see I lived in Vegas I moved there December of 2014 oh okay and I lived there for a couple years because I was applying I was going through the process of um interviewing to be a flight attendant oh funny and yeah and um then I got to like the final stage and I chickened out (laughs) ended up staying there two and a half years (laughs) and moved but people, I feel like people have the wrong idea oh. of Vegas. I feel like they judge Vegas off of one street. A thousand percent. And because when I lived there, I oh, lived yeah, in that's, Summerlin. That's basically where we live, too. Yeah. Oh, cute. I love it because they were, like, just building up the outdoor mall. Like, oh, they were yeah. just finishing it up. And it's so cute. And, like... In my neighborhood, you would see, like, kids riding bikes and, like, walking down the street holding hands with their parents. It was, like, a young family neighborhood. Oh, it really is. And, like, even when we first moved here, I was, like, had my reservations just from, like, stereotypes. And I think our family was probably, like, why are you moving your family there? You know, (laughs) like, you're crazy. (laughs) But it really is just a town like any other. We never go to the strip. Like, I could not, I mean, obviously with COVID, but like no. even before then, I don't, could not tell you the last time I was there. Maybe if we have family in town, you know, but it's like, it doesn't exist. Yeah. I guess it's the same as like, if you lived in New York and don't go to Manhattan or, you know, something like that. Yeah. You wouldn't spend all yeah, your time exactly. in like Times Square. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, it was so funny because when I moved there and all my friends back home heard that I wasn't taking the flight attendant job, they were like, what Like, what do you do? Is it hot all the time? And when I left, because I'm originally from Ohio, when I got to the Cleveland airport, it was 56 degrees. When I left Cleveland, four and a half hours later, I got to Las Vegas. It was 34 degrees and snowing. In Vegas or in, in Vegas? Cle- in Vegas. And all of my friends are like, oh, it must be so hot all the time. And then they're like, have you been to a strip club? I'm like, no. <laughs> and and I, I lived there, like I said, two and a half years. And I went to one... Um, I don't even know what you call it like a, like a nightclub it was yeah. the one that's at the win oh yeah and I went once 
And it was a horrible time. Oh my gosh. That is the exact same thing. When we first moved here, um, we were like, oh, let's like get a babysitter and do the Vegas thing. Because first of all, I never even liked the strip before we moved here. But I was like, well, we're here. Let's try it, you know? Yeah. And we went out and same thing. We like went to a club and it was like a horrible experience. We hated it. We've never it come back so, then. It was so, so loud, so crowded. Yeah. And there's just like, like. The drinks are so expensive. Yes. It's not fun at all. There are so many like other like restaurants or even like um, casinos and bars that I would rather go to. In Vegas, like, I have some of my favorite spots. None of them are on the strip. Oh, for sure. I would <laughs> I would 100% agree with that. It's so funny. I know. That's funny that you said about the snowing thing. It snowed once since we've lived here. I wonder if it was the same time. But it was, like, such an exciting day. <laughs> See, and I, I've seen it snowed because that was December of 2014. Okay. It, it snowed that year, and then it snowed, like, two years after that. Yeah, that's because, probably when it, we were here. And I'm just like, it, what does it do? Like, snow every few years? <laughs> but I saw my friends, like, they were taking pictures, like, throwing snowballs in front of the Las Vegas sign. And everyone's like, oh, that's so fake. That's so fake. They did it for Christmas. And I'm like, no way. It definitely, like, gets cold. And my dream since watching the Lizzie McGuire movie when I was in <laughs> like high school was to own a Vespa. Do you remember? Oh my gosh. I, it's so funny. You said that I was just watching the Lizzie McGuire movie the other day (laughs) while I was crafting. And I have always also wanted a Vespa. (laughs) Yes. I tell my husband that's going to be my retirement, like vehicle. (laughs) Oh my God. Do it. I got one because down the street, there was like this I don't know. It was like a little Vespa scooter shop. And there's a few of them around the valley just because like that kind of area and environment is a good place to have them. Um, Just because like the weather's nice most of the time. But I passed it like every day because when I didn't take the job being a flying attendant because I'm a big fat chicken. Oh. Um, I decided to get a job and I worked as a bartender at Planet Hollywood. So I was like a bartender, a server at Planet Hollywood. So I would have to like leave Summerlin and like go a million miles. Yeah, that's quite the trek. Yeah. (laughs) To Planet Hollywood. And, and then I had to not only park, but then walk all the way through the Miracle Mile Mall to get to like the restaurant (laughs) side. And it's like, called the miracle mile mall because it literally is like five million miles long oh my gosh it Um, really is i feel like every time i go to the strip that's where i park and i'm like why do i do this to myself (laughs) why it's like the it's it's literally it has to be a mile to get from like the entrance to um like where the restaurants and stuff are in the back of the casino but I would pass the scooter shop like every day and I'd be like, and they'd always have some like parked outside, you know, like showing them off. Yeah. And there was this like vintage kind of Vespa. And then there was this other one. It was like, so not what I came there to look at, but what I came there to look at was like the Lizzie McGuire when she like went to Rome or whatever yes. and fell in love with the pop with star. Pablo. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, my God, that's my dream vehicle. I want that in my life. And it was, like, baby pink and the cutest thing ever. But then the guy guy talked me into getting this other one. He's like, oh, this one comes with storage. It has, like, a bigger battery life because you had to, like, plug them in. Yeah. Um, And it goes faster. And Because I told him, I was like, I live in Summerlin, but I work at Planet Hollywood. And he's like, oh, like – that's not going to get you there and back. <laughs> like, You're going to looks... be on the 215 on your best spot. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely never. I think actually, no, I think I did take it up one exit on the freeway once. And that was the dumbest thing I've ever done. Yeah, in my that would be terrifying. <laughs> well, they, they only go like 50 miles an hour. So like at top speed, as long as like if you know you're going downhill or something oh my gosh that reminds me when I was a kid my um I spent a lot of time with my grandparents and my grandpa got a um, scooter like it wasn't a Vespa but similar 
And so we, we went with him to the dealership and got it. And um, he was going to follow us home and we didn't see him. So we like pulled over at the <laughs> bottom of this hill. And like five minutes later, you could see him coming up the hill in this huge line of cars behind him. Oh my like God. One lane <laughs> It was so funny. We were like, oh my gosh, I think something's wrong with this scooter because it like would not go over like 25 miles per hour. Oh yeah. Like if you're going uphill, it's useless. Yeah. Um, it's they're really designed for nice flat roads. Um, or you know, going downhill. Yeah. The guy sold me on it because he's like, Oh yeah, this one's faster and this one's like gonna be better for you. So I got this like lime green, sporty looking one. It was like if one of those, like, uh, what are they called? Like, the rocket motorcycles, but a scooter version. <laughs> and I'm, like, I, I still drove that thing everywhere. I drove it to Henderson. I drove it to, like, work every day. Love unless it. it was, like, raining. Yeah. Um, like, all over the place. Over here at Mommy Wines, we love wine. And there's absolutely nothing better than cheersing your way through the holidays. One Hope is an affordable boutique wine company coming to you directly from Napa Valley, California that gives back by supporting nonprofits. They have a bubbly brute sparkling wine that supports end childhood hunger. One in five children do not know where their next meal is coming from, but thanks to the charitable wine lovers like yourself, One Hope has been able to provide over 2,758,428 meals to help feed hungry children. Or, there's my new favorite, a red, believe it or not, a Pinot Noir that has helped over 65,267 and counting pets find forever homes. This season, give the gift of One Hope wine and feel good that by shopping One Hope, you're helping the world become a better place. Being charitable this holiday season has never been easier with One Hope's gift boxes. Make sure to check out onehopewine.com backslash my shop backslash mommy wines once again that's onehopewine.com backslash my shop backslash mommy wines also the link is in the show notes below and i'm like okay what other time in my life am i ever i was like young 20s single living in vegas i was like just living my best life with my with my little sporty scooter hey that was your time to do it I had (laughs) I had kids young so I have to wait till that's my retirement gig but I'm thinking you know I am like such like a romantic when I I'm like a dream I'm not even a romantic but like a dreamer like I picture how my life is gonna be all the time and so (laughs) what I think of when I'm retired is living in a cute old home that I've renovated that's walking distance to all the shops that I can ride my Vespa to and put my flowers in the back (laughs) oh (laughs) that's my dream that's perfect (laughs) I know I feel like we're like the same person yeah I mean it sounds perfect to me I don't know that, that's ideal <laughs> yeah I agree probably even like abroad oh my god like, that is actually my dream <laughs> like having a little like English tutor style yes. home like a little cottage oh, and that yes exactly that's it <laughs> walking to a farmer's market or riding in your Vespa on like some old-fashioned brick roads yep Oh my gosh, you're painting my picture. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let's just go live in like a Norman Walk- Rockwell painting. Um, perfect. I'm in. <laughs> it's funny. I was, tons, I was tons of snow. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So I was actually born in um, Germany. My dad was in the Air Force, and the way my mom explains it is just like that. Really? Yes. She's like, we lived, you know, we'd walk to like the town and you could hear the church bells ringing. And so like, maybe that's where this like dream comes from that I'm like, I want that life. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I have always wanted to not live in America. And I know that sounds so bad. (laughs) No, it's like, like, it's it's like, talk about like romanticizing something. I'm sure once you live there, it'd just be normal life. But like, it does seem like just a simpler way of life. And it probably isn't. But like, from our perspective, it is. The thing is, it's like, 
I have searched. I've been to almost every state except for Washington, Alaska, and Hawaii. Ooh. And I just, I'm like a searcher. Yeah. You know, and the closest thing I got to what I wanted was Tennessee, I loved, and Boston, mm. I loved. Yes. Boston, but I just have this thing with like history and like antiques me too but like modernizing antiques like i'm very strange like no I that's have... not strange at all i feel the same way that's why i feel like i can't really? live in las vegas forever because it's so the opposite of that it's everything is so brand new yes but like me like i would have like white walls but then like antiques oh my gosh same i actually <laughs> speaking of Germ- speaking of germany when um my mom had this um huge grandfather clock made for me as an heirloom and she like had it custom made like picked out everything and um so it's in my house and it's so special to me it's beautiful and my husband like does not like it but (laughs) (laughs) but I'm like I don't care it's like so pretty and just special but yeah if I had it my way it would be the same like very clean lines with antiques (laughs) yes And I feel like I could do that. Like, I would die. My favorite, actually, there's one in my hometown um, or the town I lived in, like, most of, Mm -hmm. I don't know. I know what you mean. Not my hometown, but, like, my, what I consider to be my hometown. It's Medina, Ohio. And there's, like, this outskirt township of, I don't even know what it's called. But I would pass this house almost like probably two or three times a week when I was younger and I was still living in Ohio, but it's like this Tudor English Tudor like mansion. So it has like the stucco with like the beams and the brick and they have like this giant garage and then they have a giant um, stabled barn because they have horses on the property and it all matches and their driveway has a bridge So you have to, like, cross this bridge to, like, get to the house. And there's, like, a creek that flows through the property. And all of these, like, giant old trees and weeping willows. And it is, like, my dream. But I would want that, like, small. Yeah. Like a tiny cottage. I would agree with that. I feel like um, that sounds like, first of all, a fairy tale. (laughs) But oh my, it's like the most beautiful house in the entire county. I that swear. sounds amazing. You know, and what you said about it being like smaller, I feel the same way. Like I don't ever want too big of a house. I want my family to be like close and you know, where we have to be in the same room. <laughs> but sometimes I'm like, oh man, maybe, it, you know, with the girls and stuff, I'm like driving me crazy. But yeah, like a cozy cottage or something like that is a dream. Now, if I pro- lived in the cozy cottage with two teenagers, I might feel differently. But for now, <laughs> I think it sounds wonderful. <laughs> As long as they have a bedroom, then yeah. I think it would be fine. That's true. Luckily, I only have a boy who could, like, first of all, he, me and him are so close. Oh. He is, like, up my butt. Oh. And we have um, our rental house right now is not very big, but there's a lot of, like, open space. So there's like a like a lot of floor space, but like the bathroom and the bedrooms aren't very big. Uh huh. So he spends a lot of time out in the living room with me, and he also still co sleeps. So how you feel about still nursing? <laughs> I'm four years into co sleeping. Okay, solidarity. I don't co sleep, but I yeah, that is like my worst nightmare, honestly. <laughs> he and I asked him like. Like, do you want to sleep in your bed tonight? And he's like, no, mommy, never. Aww. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, sometimes he'll take a nap in there. But basically, his bedroom is used for storage. <laughs> like, I throw all of my giant piles of laundry. Like, that's where I hide all the laundry that I never fold. Um, and where I put all of his crap when he's gone visiting his dad for the weekend. Um, but like, besides that, like his closet is storage. Like it, it just holds, we run a, we run a, a pet supply store online and it's all like doggy stuff and it's all like eco-friendly. So I keep like any extra inventory in there. 
Um, basically, just like picture frames, like stuff that we don't use. It's just like storage. And I'm like, I look at that room sometimes and I'm like, it's just like nothing. There's curtains, but nothing on the wall. Well, like just toys. It sounds like it works out well because if you didn't have that, where would you put all the stuff? So there you go. (laughs) It's true. Are you a pet owner like us? Or maybe you're soon to be adding a four-legged friend to your family this holiday season. Milo insisted on getting a dog. And once I saw Zeppelin, a chocolate golden doodle at an animal shelter, I knew she was the one for us. They instantly became best friends, and that's what inspired me to launch our canine supply shop, The Fetching Barker. The Fetching Barker has everything you need from puppy essentials to all your I have to have this items that you can't just not add to your cart. We have a strong focus on eco-friendly and natural products along with a wide range of trusted hemp and CBD treats, toys, salves, oils, and so much more. Visit thefetchingbarker.com today, and remember that a portion of all proceeds go to support global conservation efforts to protect the planet our pets love. That's thefetchingbarker.com. And feel free to go ahead and follow on Instagram at fetchingbarker. But I'm just like, I ask him, I'm like, you know, are you ever going to sleep in your own room? And he's like, no way, mommy. I'm like, he's like, I love Aww. you. And I'm like, oh my God. Okay. <laughs> he knows all the right things to say. <laughs> oh, he does. That is oh my gosh. sure. Are your girls like that? Um, Do they just play you like a fiddle? Sometimes. <laughs> my <laughs> oldest is starting to get really sweet just recently. You know, like she'll be like, she like made up a song the other day about how she has the best mom and dad. And like it's it was really sweet. So she's just now kind of kind of getting to that stage. She's five. And then my youngest, who is sixteen months, is like crazy. Just no, she's not like that at all. <laughs> In fact, when you were saying like he, you know, he'll try to say, Oh, you know, mommy I like sleeping with you or whatever. Obviously my youngest can't talk, but she does not play it that way. She'll like straight hit me if I don't nurse her. I know it's so oh my crazy. Gosh. I'm like, who are you? <laughs> Can we just put out like a PSA to let people know that parental abuse <laughs> is like a thing? Seriously. I I she's the bully of the house for sure. You know, we all feel bad for children, but Parental abuse is, you know, an epidemic that's taking over parents' lives on a daily basis. I believe it's true. Oh, my gosh. So on this show, let's go ahead and end it with a confession. Did you prepare one? Okay, I've been thinking about this, and it was surprisingly hard, even though I feel like my life is full of, like, mom fails. (laughs) But us all. I do think I have one, but it's a li- it's not super inappropriate, but is that okay? <laughs> that is fine. Okay. So it's um I mean it's really about my daughter, but so my daughter is in kindergarten and learning to read. And so like every sign will be like, oh, um, you know, kind of spell it out or whatever. And we were going Um, to the store and I'm sure you have it too Cox like cable oh yeah so yeah and so we're like going by one of their stores and she's like c-o-x Cox and then now she keeps telling everyone I can spell Cox and I'm just (laughs) like oh my god why is that the one thing that you have to like catch on to I feel like it's always I, I, every kid has one of those moments. Milo's first word, and I I don't even think I've ever said this on the show. <laughs> this can be my confession, okay? Uh, but Milo's first word was like shit, <laughs> and he would kick the the dining chair like he was stubbing his toe and be like, "Oh shit! Oh shit! 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 Shit!" And I was like, "Oh my god." <laughs> Because, he even uses it in the right context. <laughs> yeah, and like as he's doing this, there's a video. I think it's like back on Facebook, but I deactivated face deactivated Facebook like so long ago. But um, 
a, like there's a video and it's starting to pop up on my Instagram memories. Oh yeah. Go into like the stories. Uh-huh. And that was a memory a couple months ago <laughs> was him saying his first word, but he's like at the dining table kicking the leg of the dining chair just cussing up a storm that cracks me up oh my gosh it's so funny (laughs) have you been looking for the right opportunity to finally leave behind your daunting nine to five and live that laptop lifestyle you've been dreaming of maybe you have daydreams of living a life of financial freedom and time flexibility and a picture in your head laying on a beach somewhere completely stress-free Though that would be nice (laughs) and a total possibility, what I have for you is just a simple work from home opportunity. No, this isn't a get rich quick scheme or another MLM. What I'm talking about here is bookkeeping. Yes, that's right, bookkeeping. Bookkeeping is how I am able to live my life without choosing between a career and my son. How we were financially unaffected by the pandemic shutdown, and how I am my own boss living and working around a schedule that's best for my family, not someone else or office hours. Bookkeeping is one of the oldest administrative positions around making this not only a common and respected career choice, but with today's technology and cloud-based programs, a position that is in demand and able to be done from anywhere. Bookkeeping is perfect for parents who want or need to work from home, military spouses, college students, retirees, and frequent travelers. Basically, anybody who wishes to leave the chains of the cubicle behind. For more information and to enroll today, visit edjconsultinggroup.com backslash resources. I'm like, okay, well, I need to stop stubbing my toe and start wearing slippers inside. <laughs> or I'm a terrible influence. Oh my gosh, no. I'm the same. Or even things that you don't think is a bad word until your like, kid says it. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. like, what did my daughter say? And I was like, I don't think you be should be saying that. Even things like, oh, that sucks. Or, you know, something like that. I'm like, <laughs> this feels wrong. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're four. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. I never thought it was going to be a problem because being way out here, like, on his dad's side, he doesn't have, like, much family or, like, really people who are like interested in being in his life Uh and then I'm so far away from home yeah I was like oh what's it matter it's just me and him who cares like (laughs) who's he gonna offend you know until that one time he's around someone (laughs) that's what my kids do they save it until they're around their grandparents (laughs) oh yeah and I was like oh you know like people are like oh watch your mouth there's a baby around like I never I just never did that I never really censored what I watched on TV. So, like, he spits out, like, Gilmore Girls phrases and <laughs> Friends phrases, like, all the time. There's and, like or <laughs> his favorite, his favorite show used to be the Bad Girls Club. <laughs> and I am like, girl, please. Like, can you not? <laughs> that is so funny. And he would like sit on the couch with me and I'd be like drinking a glass of wine and he would have his apple juice and we would cheers and watch the bad girls club and How cute. Or, like the bad or like the bachelor. Oh my gosh. Don't even get me started on the bachelor. I love it so much. <laughs> oh my God. me too. <laughs> um, but yeah. And then he just started saying like his first, like, I think it's called like a compound sentence or like a, yeah. like a big sentence was the most dramatic season ever oh my god that is my dream actually that's going to be my new goal is for that to be ruby's first (laughs) sentence i would like be so happy (laughs) every every time like we watch it because i i never watched the bachelor until after i had milo same and I, i was home you know and i wanted like a little bit of routine in my life because I started working for myself and like, so I never really had to go anywhere. I don't know. I just like, I wanted some routine in my life. Yeah. So I was like, I need to find a new show because people say like being a stay at home mom is like boring and lonely and hard. And I didn't really believe that until I became one. Of course. 
And I'm like sitting there and I'm like, okay, well, it's like Tuesday. What the hell am I going to do with my life? Um, yep. So I, I started watching The Bachelor and it was, uh, I think his name was Chris Soul. Oh, yeah. Uh, the farmer <laughs> from Iowa. I didn't watch that and... season, but I know who you're talking about. I'm so like deeply rooted in the Bachelor universe now that I am like know every past contestant. I didn't even watch it then. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, I know who that is. <laughs> Milo has a crush on Caitlin Bristow. Well, rightfully so. <laughs> um, but that was the first season I ever watched. And it was a season where Caitlin Bristow came out of the limo and he, she was being a contestant on The Bachelor for this farmer. And she's like, I'll let you plow my field. And <laughs> That's so something she would say. The second I heard that, I was like, okay, the show is for me. <laughs> And it was, like, the first episode of The Bachelor I'd ever seen. Um, That's so funny. So I was hooked after that. I and love Caitlin Bristow. That was my routine. I, did you, I don't know if you watched Dancing with the Stars, but she just won that. I did. I'm so excited for her. Like, I know her or something, you know? But, like, <laughs> I was just rooting for her. <laughs> oh, my God. Did you Did you vote? I didn't I know I'm horrible but I because I watch it on Hulu so it was like a day later you I know? Wa- so I watch it on Hulu too yeah I watch it like first of all watching all of that on Hulu is so much better than watching it the night that it airs because it's an hour and a half on Hulu yeah. could you imagine it has to be at least two hours yeah. with commercials oh my gosh for sure and my husband can't stand it he thinks it's long enough as it is so <laughs> He probably. probably I'm so glad. Would there's a few moments in my life I am so glad I'm single, (laughs) and it's when I'm sitting in my underwear, drinking a bottle of wine, watching The Bachelorette the day after it airs. Um, You know what? I will say, my husband will be mad at me for saying this, but he is just as invested in The Bachelor as I am. (laughs) We watch it together. Oh my god, a double confession. Yeah, a double confession, but on his behalf. Hopefully, he doesn't listen. He will like if he's on a trip or something. He'll be like, "We can't." Well, I'll wait until he gets home to watch it. Like <laughs> he loves it. <laughs> oh my god, I love. I know, that. and we'll be watching it, and he'll be say something like, "Oh, what? It, why is she upset?" or something like that. And he'll be like, "What is my life?" <laughs> like, <laughs> as many of you may know, I have over a decade of financial industry experience, and financial wellness is such a passion of mine. Like many things in the world, finances tend to look a little bit different for women, even in today's generation. Webull has simplified the stock market and investing game with an easy to navigate zero commission platform, free real-time quotes, multi-platform accessibility, and 24-7 online help along with extended trading hours. If you're looking to increase your financial portfolio, set up your retirement IRA, and start investing in yourself, click the link in the show notes below to receive two free stocks on me. I feel like <laughs> like the guys who watch or tune in, most of them obviously because their girlfriends or wives watch yeah. it. But I feel like they like The Bachelorette better than The Bachelor. Yeah, because you can like relate to the like, contestants more, I guess. I, yeah. <laughs> Because I've always noticed that any of the guys who, even the guys who say they don't watch, but then, like, you're talking about it and they start chiming <laughs> yeah, in. that would be my like, husband. Yeah, dude, you yeah. watch it. Like, just admit it. Um, but they always seem to like The Bachelorette more. And I'm like, probably because there's so many more guys to, like, relate yeah. to and they can pick their favorite one and, like, root for them. Kind of like the way we like The Bachelor. Like, I would rather watch The Bachelor than The Bachelor. That's so interesting. I actually don't feel like I have a preference, but I love Bachelor in Paradise. I feel like that's my favorite part of the franchise. The first Bachelor in Paradise I ever watched was the Dylan and Oh, Hannah. yeah, just the last one that was on. Was that yeah, the last one? Yeah, they canceled, one? you know, this year, so bummer, but oh. yeah. <laughs> Way to go, COVID. Um, <laughs> Ruining everything. <laughs> Ruining when I life. needed Bachelor in Paradise um, the most. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, right? <laughs> but, yeah, like, I never, I don't know, I kind of got into it. It was like a weird first season to get into. Yeah. 
because there's so many um like remarks that they make about like past seasons of paradise yeah you kind of just have to jump in and figure it out from there yeah and but the fact that they kept like the same intro (laughs) i know i literally felt like i was watching tv i know that's what's so funny (laughs) and i'm like this is the craziest show i've ever watched and i'm putting i'm putting it on my stories like uh, like documenting it on my stories as i'm watching it (laughs) And everyone's like, no, they have that intro on purpose. It's like the same intro they've had the whole time. And I'm like, okay, now I like respect the show a little bit. Yeah, it's like pretty self-aware, like just making fun of themselves almost. It's pretty funny. (laughs) Oh, my God. I love that. But they have so much more like freedom. Mm -hmm. And there's like more like storylines to like follow too. Like, yeah, Yeah. (laughs) I could talk about The Bachelor forever, so. Oh my god, I loved it. It was so, so, uh, it's just become, like, a part of my life. Like, I feel like it's a rite of passage. I had a baby, now I'm a part of Bachelor I I would concur. (laughs) (laughs) Like, it's just, it's the circle of life, you know. That's what happens. You have a baby, you get a wine subscription, (laughs) you become a part of Bachelor Nation, there you go. I don't have a wine (laughs) subscription, so I guess I need to up my game. (laughs) Oh my god, you need to get one. And the spon- the newest sponsor, if you're going to listen to this episode, you're probably going to hear an ad yeah. for it, of my show is One Hope Wine. And they have the best wines I've ever tasted in my life. Ooh. I even like their reds, which is like a thing that didn't exist to me before. Um, because I'm basic as like all <laughs> hell. And <Same. laughs> but they they also have the world's best Pinot Grigio. And I can contest to that because I have tried, like, probably over 100 Pinot Grigios, and this is the best. Ooh, okay, I'm going to have to use your code and try it. Oh, you're going to have to. And right now, we are doing a holiday fundraiser for the ASPCA. Oh, perfect. So 10% goes to help homeless animals. Oh, I, love, I love that. I don't have any animals of my own, so I'm willing to help all the other animals. We... I've decided to partner up with them and we're going to do um, seasonal fundraisers. So the last one I did for fall was to help um, the conscious kid, which is an organization that empowers youth to be um, just more equal in like the way that they view yes. the world. So like they're very like anti-racist and they are all about like women empowerment oh, and all kinds of stuff. And they do it all through like children's oh, books. That's amazing. So if you haven't checked out the conscious kid, definitely they are so I need cute. To check that out. I'm I doing feel like we just rented one from the library, maybe. Probably. Yeah. They're in like a lot of um, they're in like a lot of inner city schools and in public libraries. But I'm doing this whole thing. I found it on Pinterest. I don't know if you've heard th- or seen this. Probably because you seem like the Pinterest queen. <laughs> Do um, love Pinterest. But it's a uh, a Christmas gift thing that you can do for kids. It's like one thing you oh, read, yeah. one thing you wear. One thing you it's like so- you create, I think, and then like another thing you play with. Okay, yeah, I think it's like something you want, something you need, something to wear, something to read. Is that right? I, yeah, something yeah. like that. And they they have um, the Conscious Kid books on Amazon. So I went on Amazon and I ordered him two little Conscious Kid books. One that's uh. They have the RBG yes. book. So I got him that, even though it's like a little bit old for him. Hey. But I figured like I could read it to him and he can keep totally. it for a while. Um, because he is like all about female I, empowerment. I love <laughs> hearing that. I mean, I feel like it's easy for me raising girls to be all about it. But I love hearing boy mom say that too. Like it just makes me really happy I, I know I would be the same if I had boys oh, too but it's important I have I have tried so hard to catch it on Instagram stories but he's like the first and I feel like it's because he hears me say it like when we watch like the bachelorette mm-hmm. or something but he is the first to be like you go girl 
<laughs> oh my gosh I love that my daughter like got she did something by herself the other day like got in the car or something and she was like I'm a strong independent woman and I was like yeah girl oh my god <laughs> I know <laughs> kids are just like the cutest I know I things. love it so if she's gonna repeat anything I say hopefully it's just that <laughs> <laughs> No, cur- no cuss words, just strong, That's independent right. woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, I feel like this conversation could go on oh, for forever. Sure. But thank you so much for being my oh. guest today. And I will send you a link to One Hope because they are yes, delicious. Yes, please do. Uh, and then we can just send each other cheers. Oh on okay, Instagram. I'm here for that. Let's do it. <laughs> Uh, but share with everybody where they can find you um, online and on social um, media. Yeah, you, my blog is called theshowgals.com and my Instagram is at theshowgals. That's so cute. Is that inspired by so, living in Vegas? kind of. Our last name is Showalter. And so oh, I just thought cute. it was like a fun play on like words of our last name and living in Vegas. And yeah, so it just felt right. <laughs> That's so cute. Everybody, I, I love hearing like the story behind. Because some people have really cute Instagram handles, and I'm like, I'm surprised. First of all, that it was available. Oh yeah. But also, <laughs> how creative. I know. Is that? I originally did want the show girls, but then I was like, that might attract the wrong audience, and it was taken. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, yeah. it was taken. It was yeah. not meant to be. <laughs> No, I had Justine. I don't know if you follow her, but she does. Um, she has the profile Spirited Sons. Oh, maybe. And she has two sons, and they were both this year diagnosed with oh, autism. Yeah. And I'm like, that is such a cute yes, handle, so cute. you know, like for her two boys. But then also, like, how was that not taken already? That's, like, the cutest Instagram ever. It was waiting for her. It was waiting for her. And that's what she, like, she said something like that. She's like, I was so surprised. Nobody take it. Like, nobody's taking it. But I got it. So, yay. (laughs) I love that. Oh, my gosh. Well, thank you so much. I loved our conversation. And you're definitely going to have to come back on the show. Well, thanks so much for having me. Have you noticed that we are rebranding over here at the Mommy Wines? We have a new logo, new segments coming soon, and of course, new merchandise. What better way to support the show than rocking your very own Mommy Wines podcast merch? Our new logo is presented on slouchy sweatshirts, tees, and tanks. We have items for men. We have items for babies. We have toddler stuff. We even have puppy hoodies for all the dogs out there listening. So make sure to head over to the Mommy Wines Podcast merch store available at Teespring and themommywines.com under the shop page. If you don't see anything you just can't live without, then you can always support the show by clicking the support button on anchor.fm backslash mommy-wines. Support and merch is always linked in the show notes below. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Mommy Wines Podcast. Make sure to leave a rating and review. To support the show you love, check out the exclusive branded merchandise on themommywines.com. For extra sassy, honest, and potentially controversial content, make sure to join me over on the Mommy Wines Patreon. Also, don't forget to check out the other shows on the MW Network. If you love scary stories and true crime, You'll love Tales After Dark. More shows are coming soon, so make sure to stay connected on social at Mommy Wines Podcast. And until next Wine Wednesday, mamas, parent and drink responsibly.